jump into our last interview of the day with Alessandra Heder. I'm so happy to introduce this amazing artist and also a dear friend, uh, Alessandra Heder. Lele, can you talk a little bit? Hi. Can you talk a, a little bit about your background and how did you become this amazing artist that you are today? Okay, so first of all, thank you so much for like, the amazing nonsense. Um, my brother it might be one of the best friends I have, but um, so basically when I graduated from school, I went, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. So I went through like fashion, like um, anthropology, like history, like you can name like all the universities in the world, like I tried to do like a semester, and one point I was just like, you know what? So I, I went to Asia and I was starting to work with kids with a bit of social work. And, uh, and my mom gave me a camera, thanks mom for the camera, but it wasn't until I went back to Brazil that I realized I could probably do that in house, which was like a fiction. Um, since I was working with kids, like since the beginning, I was always trying to like take portraits of kids. And, uh, and I remember I was like editing them, I could like, feel like the kids are like actually like seen through me and they made me feel kind of judged and in some way they made me want to be a better person. So that's when I realized like how powerful like a picture can be and like and then since then I've been working on that all of the word project is like in process, yeah. Which I photograph kids from all around the world. And like my idea of it is just like trying to show the how like all of the kids are like kind of the same, you know, like in kind of the background, in kind of like the race, right thing, like they just not corrupted yet. Yeah. Like yeah, like the genuine like kind of way that they look at you. And I feel that uh, the eyes are like witness to the soul. So um I just like since then I've been like using that powerful tool as if trying to raise awareness to the causes that I've been working with, just making like kids look through you and being like, hey, like, how are you living the world to us? Like, what are you going to do to help us? And that's how it started with photography. Mm, that's beautiful. Can you talk a little bit more about maybe like one experience, like one interaction or like one of those amazing trips that you've done, like, and like, uh, when you, you knew, you know, like you're on the right track, uh, like maybe like an interaction with those kids, like and talk about something more specific, you know, like a trip and experience. When everything started, like when I was 18, and I was like actually a bit lost because I went through like passion and I through like anthropology and like history, like I might have done like all of the university that like, someone can like actually in the most like different kind of subject, but um, so what you like be and then like creating was just like I was always like searching like since I was a quick kid I was like I was like asking questions and like searching like the truthful way and I feel that so for an example like right now like my first time is like taking pictures of kids because um I feel that like we have like some generous like the way of look and uh, and society hasn't corrupted you at so it just made me like it how can I say that just create like lace, like section in deep lace of like how can I expose like the whole like beauty because we're thinking like like first world country and like super developed but when I lived in Asia I could see how like we're like less developed than them because in some way they have like the whole like um connection with nature and the whole connection with community like in my opinion is like one of the things that like we like lacking the most like lately in society. And that's why I wanted to be a photographer because I just wanted to portray like that whole like situation was going on in like those like smallest island, like no electricity, like nothing. And how people in there were like much more aware of like the world, like comparing to what we are today. And uh, that's why I wanted to be a photographer. So I'm like, and uh, this beautiful work that is behind you is one of your artworks. And uh, as people can see, like it, it has a lot of like it. It's the starting point is always like a picture of like nature, and then 
can you talk a little bit about your your process like how do you create those amazing works because uh i know there's a lot of work uh labor involved so we started with the kids and at one point i was just like okay i need to evolve my work and it went back to nature because like in some way you feel that like so like what happened to me was when i did so i moved to it when i was like 18 and i went to do the social work i was like completely lost and i had a camera with me like as if like any tourist has it and it was only until like, I came back to Brazil when I was like seeing the picture that I saw like the purple to her in my eyes. Because when I was like treating the pictures of the kids, like it was as if they could see like through me. And they made me feel judged. They made me want to be a better person in some way. So like I managed to like not, not mix, but um, how do we want to make like a kid, like a world for like for a kid, like a better world for like a kid. So like we need to take care of like the universe of like the earth. So it's like when I'm sorry, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> My question was, can you talk about the process like when you are creating yeah. an the artwork? Yeah. Like, so like I started as a kid, as I had like it's like 50 portraits of like children that lived in the community and they made me rethink about like what is actually important in your life, you know, like. For me, as an example, I was like born in like a society in a capitalism kind of black like city where like I feel that everything is like so frenetic and like we don't actually stop and think about like the important things in life. So when I went to like this really small island with no electricity, with like a couple like people living in it, and like what more happened? Like my like people that I used to deal with, like in my in, in Sao Paulo. And then realize like what are the most important thing in the world like nature and the present community and i just felt that um in some way like capitalism and like those big cities and the way that we live today like we ended up losing like the most important things in the world which is basically like nature and live it, living as a like community kind of thing you know so um yeah absolutely two I things to, like i wanted to like bring back to like where I was born, like the idea of living, which like most of the people were so like, like old school, I don't know how to say the word, but it was like, not old school, but like when you say like those countries are like under development, like some countries, like in my opinion, they were like the most developed country in the world because they knew like the rule of like how to live like, like, like not in a happy world, but like how to live which is basically like the connection with nature and like living as a community which like with people like it is from Sao Paulo and I see how much you like the whole like solution, which is so important and I so, think it was like the main thing that changed my work was how can like those kids that like, been with like a coke and ball for like ages and they like can be more happy than their brothers they can play with the last like amazing football ball and like in three days and not even gonna like remember the ball but like those kids they can be happier with less because less is more in some way and that's like something okay. that i'm always portraying less is more can you talk a little bit about the two prints that we have on together on the alpha platform and your process for that um so the, uh, the circle of life the circle of so um, I feel that like, so like you say like, so my art, like I was trying to like create a virtuous um, connection with the viewer and portraying the uniqueness, the complexity and the beauty about the subject. So, um, so in the theory that she's talking about, you call the circle of life. So it's basically like every trunk, like every tree, like when they're born, like they have like a circle of life with it. So my whole idea is like instead of like we have so many like venues and like sorry for the word but like shit happening in the world and I think it's more um how do I say the word I'm sorry from English but it's more um you can connect more when you try to start. so like basically like what Sebastian like Salgado did which like my favorite artist in the world like he created something so beautifully composed they ended up like um raising awareness like um drawing the attention of the viewer to like social issues like it's like understand like we have so many news and like things mm -hmm. read about in our articles but yeah. i feel that and part of the population they just don't want to deal with that but 
when you like manage to like create an art, which can call attention, like social issues, as well as like creating attention to, I don't know, to, it's just like you can make something beautifully composed. It's easier for you to like call attention, like social problems, and uh, that's what I yeah. try to do in some way. But what what I'm curious to know like, is like. How, how do you create those beautiful works? I think the, the one in the middle, the next one, you can see like the whole process. So is it like based on a photograph? Uh, and how do you create that? Um, it's basically like, if it's like technology, it might be like, we have lots of bad things to talk, talk about, like the technology, but as well as is life, it is as if I'm like trying to create like the most truth, like vertical garden with the ways that we have it today. And like, just like showing people like the crucial role that nature has it in our life. And, um, and just like using like all the multimedia kind of words. So like, I kind of like my photography, like in some way, like with like a crop within um, technique, I managed to create like a 3D dimension work which is which is beyond the photography visual photography and therefore it's just like it shows people how important like nature is like when you have my works like in people's house i'm sure it's not as if as you have a window like through like the whole of these forests but it kind of like it, it helps because and i just want to people like to realize how like crucial how important it is like for them to have like nature inside them how is like, like the way to live and yeah Lele, i can see like i think i would summarize your work in two words please correct me if i'm wrong but number one and just looking at this you can tell that it's a very important part is community and education and number two is how can you bring nature into people's houses and i think this integration and these pictures they sum it up beautifully we're obviously great fans uh but i think we didn't cover we we talked a lot about the the green works but it, your connection to the ocean as well which is a big part of your your life as well yeah that's where i was gonna go so like like a next phase of your work is like now the oceans and corals phase, but like i just wanted i feel that like we have like so many news and articles and like not like these journals like going on around us, which like some of the time like quite fake, but I, I feel that like some people they just want to read, they just don't want to like learn about it because, and that's like, if you ask me like, what is art? I think art is like the universal language that ends up speaking with like the most like genuine and like truthful way with the other. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Like, instead of me like showing like all those like scenes of like, and deforestation of the bleaching, like things with the coral, like I rather like show the, the, the uniqueness, the complexity. Yeah, okay. like, I love when like people they come to my work and they come and they stand up and they just see it from closely because like most of my work is like actually like cutting leaves and uh, maybe you can see in the work that I'm doing, like it makes no sense, but it's just like <laughs> every leaf that I cut every day and like it's so my DNA has own complex like complexity and it's so important so like i rather like create that connection like the love because we tend to protect what we love instead of just showing like the bad like i wanted to be an artist since i was a kid like like using art as like this global way of communication and then at the beginning i was like always doing like the first station and like the kids like with like nice opportunity and everything and like right now i just like i chose to like show the beauty about it because in some way, like, if I think that you create a connection with the viewer, like, you ended up, like, raising more awareness and just instead of, um, but I don't know, like, making people no. cute, you know? I just want to make people love instead of making people cute. Absolutely. And you absolutely um, allow that to happen to all of us, you know? Like, you, you make us fall in love again with the essential things that we have in this world, which is, like, nature. Uh, children, like other people, you know, and I think like, like we at Alpha believe that like this is probably like one of the most important um, 
roles of arts today, you know, to like bring awareness and to create uh, connections, like not only between human beings, but like also with us, like, and the earth, like, in a way, like, we're, we're all one. What is art for you? I think that like art is evolving in some way and it should be like something that like everyone could relate to. Depending on like the background of where they live, like in some way they could put it like make us like see beyond, it's not only see, but it kind of like activate all the like senses. And like in some way, like I think like like talking about it as like her eyes are corrupted, like the way we see stuff, but as soon as you like see an art, like you feel. So you just kind of like like it's I don't say that so in English, but it, it, it it's more truthful about like the perspective that you have into like social issues of life or like not even issues but the beauty and everything. And uh, I think that's the most important thing is like to make kind of like when I say that like my art is kind of like is an easy language or is like accessible or educational for everyone. It's like in some way that um I don't want to like, like, depending on like a background, a race or anything, I want like everyone to like relate it to my art, you know, and, uh, and learn like something way more deep than you're actually going to learn if you're like reading an article, because it's not only about reading or like your mind or your eyes, it's about like feeling your soul and your consciousness. It makes you like, actually like understand more the subject than any other way of communication. So for me, art is like, Involved in some way. It makes and I think with, like with that of. said, like we always end the interview asking for a recommendation about like a book, a movie, or maybe an activity, like or what keeps you inspired. Cause the, the secret life of trees. Can I just can I finish the sentence? So basically, the secret life of trees. It it's it, it talks about the wood wide web. The wood wide web is basically like all of the roots in the forest that they actually talk with each other, and it says a lot about community. Like when she asked me, when he asked me about like when she and I were things when I was living in the side, and I saw like the importance of like living like the nature and like having a sense of community. How much is like one of the most important thing in the life in these days, like in the, those big cities that we live. So the secret life of trees it just shows like why is the forest like so far from everything because they need each other, they help each other. And we can apply that like as a community, as a friends, like in a much bigger way because it's not like if you have a tree like they got a fungus that is sick, you're gonna have another tree from one kilometer away saying you all the nutrients and you all the help the other tree. And like it's not because she's like Madrid Teresa, but it's because if the tree falls, the wind is gonna hit way more in the other tree. So like in some way we need each other. And there's one thing like with all of this pandemic and everything like we're lacking it, it's like we're no one alone, like we need a community to succeed. And I think that the forest, they have a lot to teach us. And there's a book that I've been reading called The Secret Life of Trees. It's okay. amazing. I'm, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Le, you thank you so much. <laughs> it has been amazing to have you here. This is like I'm like quarantine in Brazil. So. <laughs> I forgot to ask you that. <laughs> you were in Brazil. So <laughs> you were in Brazil. Be safe. <laughs> and please continue creating those amazing artworks, which we all love so much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we love you too. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for being here. It has been a pleasure again. And stay tuned. The next uh, artist Q&A is going to happen in two weeks. And I hope to see you there.